Hi everyone, Simplygon here, and today we're going to be covering how to use the Simplygon toolset to create a character LOD chain in Maya, and then import that into a game engine. We'll be using Unreal today for this example. We'll also then go over how you can do LOD chains directly in Unreal using the Simplygon plugin. In games with long view distances or lots of characters, you'll want to create chains of LODs for your characters. In a Battle Royale game, for example, it'd be extremely inefficient to have all your characters at the highest quality all of the time. With Simplygon, you can automatically create perfect-looking LOD chains for your characters with just the click of a button and a few steps. Simplygon is excellent when it comes to retaining the deformation zones and the general look of the character. Let's jump in. Right, so here we have Polly, who is our little Simplygon robot friend from the Walk in the Park video. Polly has a lot of triangles, about 600,000. Seeing that Polly is so densely triangulated, we'll need to do some quite aggressive optimization here. What we're going to do is a really heavy reduction for the first LOD, and then subsequent LOD levels will be less and less intense, but still important. We'll also show you a quick alternate approach to handling assets such as this one. Firstly, we're going to reduce the mesh based on screen size, which is a really quick and easy way to reduce your character mesh. So first, I'm going to add an advanced reduction template from the Simply Gone menu. And the reason we're picking advanced is if we go into reduction settings, it allows us to see the relevant option, which is reduction target on screen size. What this does is let us reduce the mesh based on the amount of space it's taking up on the screen. So if we set this to 800, for example, this means that it's reducing the mesh for viewing at a distance where the object's bounding box is 800 pixels across on the screen. So next, let's add a cascaded LOD chain by selecting the plus icon and then selecting advanced reduction. Adding a cascaded LOD means that the next LOD in the chain is going to be based on the output of the previous step, which typically leads to a cleaner LOD switch. Let's open reduction settings. Now we could just use the triangle reduction here. It's set to 0.5, for example, and that would just reduce whatever Simply Gone produces in the first stage by 50%. But we'll be using screen space reduction here again for this particular LOD level. So let's select the screen size reduction again, and this time we'll set it for 300 pixels. We'll do the exact same thing again and add another cascade LOD in advanced reduction. This time we'll be very aggressive and set the screen size to just 100 pixels. So that should be it, let's start the processing. Okay, now that's done, let's have a look at what Simply Gone did. So I've got LOD 2 and 3 hidden here. LOD 1 looks great with very little difference from what I can see. It's reduced from the 600,000 triangle count down to around 80,000. Let's hide that one and show LOD 2. Now we're down to 32,000 tries meant for this kind of view distance most likely. Finally, let's have a look at LOD 3, the aggressive reduction. My little friend is looking a bit geometric now, but actually for 100 pixels of screen space, Simply Gone has done a really good job of reducing this skinned mesh and retained a lot of the material detail really well. It's meant to be viewed at this kind of distance. So that's how you can make a simple LOD chain, but there is another option that we could choose to use if we wanted to be even more efficient. The issue is that this mesh in particular has a lot of different parts, different UV and geometry borders. What we could do is use the remeshing tool for the last LOD level instead of the reduction algorithm that we just did. To do that, we're going to have to delete the last reduction from the chain. And this time instead, we'll add a LOD component and choose basic remeshing with material baking. We just have to choose what materials we want to cast. Let's remove transparency, uh, keep incandescence as we do have some shiny parts here. Uh, remove translucence. I'm going to delete all the old LODs here and start the process again. The reason I didn't add this into the cascaded LOD chain is I didn't want the remeshing itself to be based on the reduction chain we have already. I prefer it to be based on the original mesh. So what we should get is a two-part LOD chain and then a remeshed character for our LOD3. So here is our remeshed character. It's reduced quite a lot to around 2,000 triangles. And it's also merged into one material, so it's now only one draw call, which is much more efficient, especially if you had lots of these characters on screen at the same time. If we quickly pick a joint, you can see that we can still animate our character and that all of this will retain that skinning information. Okay, let's quickly import this into Unreal. I've got all my LOD levels here and I'm going to import them into an LOD chain within Unreal so that the LOD switches automatically based on the distance we are from the character. And remember, you can do skeletal mesh reduction inside Unreal if you have the Simplygon plugin installed. First, let's open our LOD0 character 
The way that you import additional LOD levels is if you scroll down on the Asset Details panel to LOD Settings, then click LOD Import, and then Import LOD Level 1. Now I've got my exports from Maya here, so I'm going to select LOD 1 and import that. Great, that looks like it was imported correctly. And you can, of course, switch between the LODs at the top of the window here. You follow the exact same steps for LOD 2 and LOD 3. Unreal will also let you have control over at what screen size these meshes appear. Very similar to the screen size reduction options we were using in Maya. If you scroll down to LOD Picker and then select LOD 1, for example, I can change the screen size value. I could increase this to 0.5, for example, which means it would be more prominent in the chain and would show when its bounding box is at half the size of the screen's resolution. Next, I'll quickly show how we could go about importing that remeshed version of LOD3 that we did. If you go to LOD settings and then set the number of LODs back to 3, this will essentially remove the last LOD for us so we can import it again. There we go, all removed. So I'll click the drop down again and select import LOD level 3. I'll then select our remeshed version of LOD3. There we go, it's all imported. But if I switch to it, you can see the materials are clearly not correct. And this is because, if you remember, the remeshed version will combine all the materials together in one baked atlas, so it's one draw call. This is very efficient, but it means we just need to set up the material manually for it in Unreal. Unreal has already noticed this new material slot and created a material for us. I'll just use this one for now. If I import the textures I exported from Maya, color will go into base color, incandescence goes into roughness, and normal goes into normal. The specular goes into the specular input. If we now look at the mesh again, it's correct. As you can see, Simply Gone has retained a lot of those shiny materials really well, especially considering how heavily reduced the mesh is. And just to showcase with a super quick dance party, you can see that all of these LOD levels still retain their skinning weights correctly, even the LOD3 remeshing character we made. Okay, let's quickly go over how to use the UE4 plugin to create an LOD chain. It's important to note that everything we've just done in Maya can be done directly in Unreal, which is fantastic, especially if you're using Unreal as your target output. As you can see here, I've got the Simply Gone plugin installed and activated. We're currently working in Unreal version 4.26.2. I've just quickly reset our friend Polly here back to just one LOD level. Sorry, Polly. First, we need to create an LOD recipe. I'm going to right click in the content browser, go to Simply Gone and then LOD recipe. And then I'll just call this LOD Robo. If I then double click this LOD recipe, it opens a new window where we can create our process setting. First of all, I'm going to click add mesh at the top. You can add any skeletal mesh or static mesh that's already imported into Unreal. I'm going to search for Robo and select the skeletal mesh for Poly, which now has only one LOD level. Number of LOD levels will leave at four. And as you can see on each of these LOD levels, I can set the pipeline method. We could even select remeshing for LOD3, just like we did in Maya, but I'm going to leave it as reduction for now. If we open up the LOD, we can then tweak these settings for each level. Under reduction settings, we can enable or disable any of these options. We even have the screen size option available to us, just like in Maya. We have access to exactly the same suite of tools here. I'll leave as default for now, so LOD1 will reduce by a ratio of 0.5, LOD2 by 0.25, and LOD3 by 0.125. When ready to process, save the recipe, and then click Build. And there we have it. As you can see, it's done a fantastic job of reducing this mesh, and we didn't even have to leave Unreal to do it. Thanks for watching. To recap, we went over how to generate an LOD chain using the Simply Gone tools in Maya how to use the remeshing tool to create an extremely reduced LOD level with just one draw call, and then how to import all of those into Unreal for a final game-ready LOD chain setup. And then we went through how to do these same steps with the Unreal plugin. We hope you enjoyed watching, and as always, please visit simplygone.com for more information.